if you could pick three players from the Bears roster to assign assign them to the XFL right now, just to get development time, to 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 play more than they had the opportunity to, you have questions about them, whatever they need to develop. You say, hey, you get every team gets to pick three players and send them to the XFL or the USFL, which starts in April. Who would those players be? So, Nick, let's start with you. You want all three of them right now? Just give us one. Okay. We'll go first, one by one. Yeah, first guy I have is Tristan Ebner. Obviously was a, a rookie last season. And when he got into some of the games, he only played 85 offensive snaps. It looked like it was a little too much for him. There were times where there were open lanes and he's just not reading things right. So, hey, go get some some valuable snaps in the XFL where you see a lane, you see a lane. You got to hit it, right? So, I think that would be a guy that he has a lot of versatility in terms of what he can do as a pass catcher. But we need to still see him as a runner. And so... I think he'd be a guy that could benefit from some extra snaps. Like I said, 85 uh, all last season. So, Tristan Abner is one guy. A- excellent choice. I would co-sign that one. Uh, my first, and he, and uh, I think it's Jake or Jack in the chat had it. Uh, Valus Jones, Jake Gold, what's up? I'm with you. That's my first pick. Let's get some route running going on here. Let's get some punt returns going on here. Let's... I almost feel like Valus would be a guy that'd be like, "Yeah, I'd love to do it." Like, he, he, he wasn't on the field at all to your original premise. So, I think Valus could use the practice, and Valus could use um, the instruction. And I, I'm not going to say he could use the confidence because he definitely believes himself. But uh, if if this was actually a thing, I think Valus would be a great candidate. Yeah, I think that like the the. The balance that you would have to find here as a general manager is right. You're playing the risk and reward, so you're you're picking players that need the playing time, but not to like be too blunt about it. But you always got to think worst case scenario too. What happens if they suffer an injury that prevents them from playing the following fall? Can you live without that player? And that's kind of the the question you got to be asking with and with any of these guys. So in Valus's case, it's unfortunate for Valus, but the answer is yes, we could live without him, and we need to get him better. Well, I liked how he finished the season. I actually think he had some bright moments there in the last he did. few weeks. He did, and it's like, okay, now can you take that and go dominate a league that you should probably be one mm-hmm. of the best players in? And considering that, you know, mid season we were having a conversation about Valus Jones, wondering if he would even make the team next year. Yeah. So I think on the risk reward side, I agree. I mean, I'm okay with, I'm okay with both of the, the picks that you guys have, because I'm, I'm not sure either one of them are, I mean, at this point I would say Valence Jones is on the bears. Yeah. This coming season. But uh, you know, I think the bears are going to add there. I think they're going to draft. They I think to. they're going to sign. And I think that playing time could still be limited unless he takes a huge step forward. And so a league like the XFL could definitely help him. The Bears want Bayless to be on this roster. They're hoping that he's going to be on this roster. It would suck if he's not, but he's got something to prove here come training camp. There's no doubt. There's a reason why he was the only wide receiver drafted by Ryan Poles in his first draft. So, got to got to make, you know, he's got to obviously prove himself. But I think, like Adam was saying, he had a nice stretch at the end of the last season. All right, mine uh, is... Real quick, Steve B says that the reason we were off the rails to start the show is because Carmen happened. <laughs> It's messed up, Stevie. It might be. Stevie. Steve Steve, B. Stevie B. My Steve God. B. Steve I, B. Steve I B. hate to say it, though. I I think we might have to check the tape. I think it was actually whoever asked the question about the Sox. Because I think we were on track with the XFL, and then the Sox Super Chat came up, and that's what sent Ooh, us on a tangent Sox about everything comment. that happened last night. I don't know. We'll have to go back and check the tape. I'm never going to blame our Super Chatters. I know. I don't. I mean, it's easy to blame Carm. Yeah, let's just do usually that. his fault, but I have to say, <laughs> in this case, I don't think it was. If I hadn't done the sock thing last night, then this wouldn't be a sock conversation today. So if you want to so dra- yeah. you drag it all the way back to its source, yeah, that makes sense. You can blame it on me. Yeah. It's fine. All right, because <laughs> right, your I'll, response yeah, yeah. could have been, "Hey, go check out last night's show." Yeah, we don't talk about last night's show on today's show. Well, yeah. that'd be a stupid take, though. So <laughs> hit the like button if you like the sock story. Like button for the sock story. Let's get up, let's get up to eighty on the socks. All right. <laughs> My first guy is somebody who I already feel like is on the last straw already. So, like, in terms of risk and reward, whatever. Um, Alex Leatherwood. 
Right, like the Raiders said goodbye. <laughs> he came to the Bears. It didn't go well. There's obviously some stuff. It's not just getting. Was it Josh Sweat that blew by him or whatever that was? I think. Yeah, I think. I think so. it was yeah, that game when he was playing right tackle. Um, the bottom line is got to get better on the field. Clearly, whatever's off the field that he needs to get more trust from coaches. Go play in the XFL. Gets, uh, you know, get yes, better. he should be volunteering. Raise yeah. your hand. <laughs> I'm not push. kidding. Let me show you what I can do here. I don't think that's. What position, Adam? Because obviously he's been left repping tackle. it right. I mean, yeah, see, I, I, but see, here's the thing. I don't know if the Bears agree with me on it or not, but I said when, he, when they made the signing that he should be a guard. Yeah. That it's just not working at tackle, and they put him out there at tackle. It didn't go well again. So I would go see if he could dominate a guard and then. That makes sense. You know, see how it goes. Yeah, see if you can get some interior guys. Uh, Mike's second guy. We, wait, hold on. Are we going snake? Oh, yeah. What? Do we, yeah. What do we, Which way are we doing? We're going to go right Doesn't back matter. to you, Mark. Do it. No, no. No, no. You go ahead, Nick. Okay. Second guy. We don't have overlapping guys anyway, but second guy I have on my list is Chase Allen, the tight end out of Iowa State. Guy that only played two offensive snaps. He was signed to a 2023 reserve slash future contract. And, again, there's nobody outside of Cole Komet right now. Might as well see what you have there. He did some really good things at Iowa State, um, and I think he would benefit from playing in this league, getting more snaps. And he was on special teams a little bit, but you, you just need to see what you have there. They obviously signed to a future contract for a reason. Why not see if Chase Allen can be something? Doesn't excite me, but I'm down with Chase Allen getting some XFL. No, but, I mean, in reality, yeah. if this were a real thing that was happening, it would be a lot of, like, the practice squad guys that didn't play. Right. Year. Get my get my guy Harrison hand out there. But since yeah. I'll, since it's not a reality, I'm going to pick somebody who did get to the quarterback and looked amazing when he threw down Trey Lance. And then we did not see a whole lot of my guy, who I'm a huge fan of and I'm rooting for. Uh, Dominic Robinson, I would love to see him continue to hone his technique, build up his confidence as he gets stronger. I'm, I know he's adding weight getting ready for year two, but uh, Dom Rob is definitely still a work in progress and could use the reps. So Dom Rob, you can, what's, what's our Chicago team again? The, the, we don't have one. It's the St. Louis battle Hawks. Totally the battle Hawks. No. Dom There's Rob to the battle Hawks. What? <laughs> uh, by the way, the sea dragons uniforms are sweet. Very famu. If you ask me a little Florida A&M mm. look to them. The oh yeah. 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 There was a little Florida and a and a and M in there. Um, I was gonna do Dom Rob too. I think it's a good one. I think it's a guy who still like doesn't have a lot of reps as a defensive end. They're asking him to do a lot now. I could also see the Bears being like, "Yeah, we still think we can develop all that stuff off the field," and you know he doesn't need to take any more beatings and you know in the trenches in, in an XFL game. But I do think that's a good option. Um, my next guy is someone who was drafted last year, similar spot, didn't play really at all and want to see what he can do. But he was – obviously they think enough of him that they kept him on the 53-man roster, and that's Jatir Carter. Hmm. Um, he – again, it's just sort of a situation where, like, we didn't see him. Like, yeah. when's the playing time coming? How are the Bears going to know? Are they really going to base it off of three preseason games? you know, in, in the fall. So to me, that's an obvious choice of get him reps, get tape that you can evaluate him and get a better idea so that I would go with him. Rookie class. Yeah. See what you have in them, especially the guys that didn't play. Another guy that I have is Elijah Hicks, another rookie from last season, 86 total snaps. He went in when Eddie Jackson went down against the New York jets. I think this is a guy that in this league too, you need DBs. You need a bunch of DBs because of all the, you know, the 11 personnel you're going to see from all these teams. And he was a guy that was a corner at California. And then he went to or Cal and then he transitioned to safety. So he has athletic traits, but maybe just some snaps against, obviously, uh, in the XFL could help him out there. He played a bunch on special teams, 213 snaps. Let's see what Elijah Hicks can do. Another one that makes perfect sense. Um, I'm going to channel my tennis into this one. When you're a 
veteran in tennis and <clears throat> somehow you lose your motivation. You got to get it back. You got to go play challengers to move back up the ranks. I, Andre Agassi famously did this, played challengers, then ended up getting back to the top of the tennis world again. Uh, this, is a, this is a little punitive, but when you miss five extra points, you need to go work on your game. And Cairo Santos, you were great kicking field goals last year, 21 to 23. And you are 31 years old, but you can't be missing five extra points. So Cairo, again, we're not worried about anybody getting hurt. You're a kicker. This should be just lovely for you. Cairo to the Battle Hawks for some extra work. Let's go. So should I tell him? Does, I mean, Lawrence. does, does someone in the comments want to tell him? I don't yeah. know if anyone's going to know. <laughs> not sure how many people. Mark is confused. Uh, it's there a different it case. Can we take that comment there at the bottom from uh, Jepper? Oh, Give me a no. Jep rocks. Oh, come God, on, yes. XFL. You know, no kicking? <laughs> <laughs> no extra, no field goals? No nothing? There's field goals. There's no extra points. Yeah. Close enough. There's Just no kicking extra points. He was good at That's field goals. Fine. He was good at field, field goals. goals. I don't care. <laughs> Just make him go down there and kick. It's punitive. I don't. That's. I'm sorry. That's true. Whatever. <laughs> I, I didn't know that at one well, maybe point. Maybe we sent him to the USFL. They still there didn't. Okay. Yeah, make it's him go to the USFL. USFL. So Let's they see. have uh, any spring league one damn pointers <laughs> from the two, I think, two pointers from the five, and three pointers from the ten. What a dumb league. This was mentioned <laughs> on yesterday's show. It's a I, dumb league, but it allowed the Battlehawks to come back and win that game yeah. because they scored a touchdown. They needed to go for three, they hit it. So you could say it's dumb, but it was actually yeah, really so you entertaining. You can get nine points. You can get nine points on a touchdown instead of eight. Great idea. Up. Let's go okay. XFL. Bring it to the NFL. Let's get let's let's get nines and sevens and eights and fours. All right. So now let's go backstage okay. and and uh, reveal. Uh, I don't know. You guys can tell tell me if I'm a bad guy or not. Um, we actually had a meeting today while I was here. We did. Even though I was in the, you know, how I was in that chair from the point I got here. We had a meeting mm -hmm. about did? whether or not we should tell you before the show that there were no extra points. Where was I? You were sitting right there. <laughs> you were literally I just wasn't right listening. across. Yeah. <laughs> you had your headphones in. You were yeah. locked in, Mark. Kevin Kata came over. Mm. Yep, you were locked in. We, we were we were had a whole <sighs> XFL discussion, and we were wondering if we should tell you before the show. And then, so here's my penalty. Can I do a self-imposed penalty? <laughs> My penalty is that I have to watch the XFL this weekend. I got yeah, yes. to watch a full game of the XFL. Punitive, 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 right here. I listen. I got to own this as as your handy dandy trusty Bears podcaster. I've got to know what's going on in all football leagues. This is a loaf on my part, and I will. I will. It's not, well, here's the thing. We decided that it, it's good content, <laughs> and you should. Who should really know that? Like. I should know it. You should I, I mean, not I know, know the X. No, you shouldn't. You should I, I not think know I should. the XFL I think I, extra I think I point rules. That's what we decided in our meeting that we had right in front mm -hmm. of you was, is this embarrassing enough for Carm or is it just funny? And we agreed it's just funny. It's just funny. Nick didn't know the XFL I had no idea until Adam rules. told me. I'm like, oh. And the only reason I knew is because they had it on my third screen there on Sunday when I was actually watching Daytona instead of the XFL. I mean, were you not impressed to... to uh, Steve B's, Mark, Mark knows, did you not, were you not impressed that I was able to tie Santos into Agassi, into challengers, and getting back to number one? I thought that was big. Yeah, that did nothing for me. That didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, went over my I, I'm glad you guys didn't, I, I'm glad you played it this way, because it just underlines to uh, our our diehard, um, and by way, become a diehard, allchgo.com. Get your 20% off your merch. Come join us at our takeovers. Uh, hang out in our happy hours. Bulls one coming up, Blackhawks one. Uh, support us period we really 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 appreciate it and it's awesome for us to get to know you but uh i think one of the things about the show that i hope people like is that the show is real yes. and this was a, that was yet another uh real moment. real moment right there right there for you so good decision by you guys <laughs> for, hashtag for the content um all right my last guy is jake tonjus yeah. <laughs> for the same reasons you did on chase allen different yeah. tight end Guy didn't play a lot. He kind of almost he was, like a fullback. He was right? doing fullback yeah. stuff in training camp as well. <laughs> <laughs>